Hi, this is Karen O'Brien, and we are going to cover um, a tutorial on how to set up a tailings dam model. So just a note, I am not a tailings dam expert. So if we run into any problems or you don't agree with anything I say in this video, please get with me because we have tailings dam experts on staff and Jim is available to take questions or to clarify things. And Noemi is available to clarify things about the tailings dam tool. So if you have any issues or questions, just get with me and we'll get those questions directed to the correct people. Okay, so let's start with uh, the tutorial. So you guys remember, if you go to my documentation page, if you go to my documentation page, I have um, this, list of tutorials that you can use to help you understand and learn how to build data for, for these Flow2D projects. And um, this advanced training module, Tailings Dam Module 7, is um, being updated right now by me because there's some new stuff in the plugin and this video is going to help you figure out how to get data ready to get this model going. All right, so let's start with um, the data assembly. So I am not going to get into the Dalings Dam model tutorial just yet. I'm going to spend about 10, maybe 15 minutes showing you how I assembled the data for this training. So first thing that I did when I did a search for this dam is I got this wiki page. Uh, so very important information off this wiki page that's super easy is the date of the failure, the time of the failure, and the time that it took the water to get to one of the downstream um, uh, areas. So let's start with the location. If you click on this guy right here, I'm gonna just, well, I'm not gonna click on it. If you click on it, it's gonna take you right here. And this is awesome because it gives you all kinds of resources for this map. But the only one I really want is this guy right here. Um, because the rest of them are fine, but this one right here is the best. If you click on this, it's going to download a KML file. Now, I have put that KML file into the, um, hold on a second, I'm picking something off my computer over here. I have put this data into the Module 7 Resources folder and named it dambreach.kml. So all KML data is lat long data, so you can use it just about anywhere and your computer will recognize it. So I went to uh, Google Earth Pro. Now you can use Google Earth Online or Google Earth Pro and still use KML files, but uh, Google Earth Pro is nice because it's got some drag and drop functions and it kind of remembers your places a little bit better than you know, if you go to Google Earth Online and you don't sign in, it might forget your places. So I can just drag and drop this dude right onto the map and it'll take me straight to the dam. And then I use the historical photos right here to kind of bounce back and forth between the pre-dam and the post-dam failure aerials. And then I use the aerial of the post-dam failure, the first clear day I could find of the post-dam failure to de find this area of interest polygon, which is just this guy right here. And then I export this area of interest polygon as a KMZ file. Uh, so KMLs are points, KMZs are anything other than points, paths, um, flyovers, uh, points, all that stuff is, 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 is zipped together into a KMZ file, which is just a zipped KML. And, and if you know anything about KML, they're just like an XML, you know, they're just text data. See, they're super, super easy. So let's, then I export that area of interest module seven KMZ, and I take that over to Global Mapper. So Global Mapper is cool. It costs about, I don't know, $600, 600 US dollars. And the reason I like it and the reason I go ahead and just spend the money for it is because it gives me like online resources and data that is ready to download and ready to use. Um, so in this case, you know, dam studies usually have really excellent ele elevation data. And I have 
a video on my website. It's called Elevation Data Manipulation or Elevation Data Preparation or something like that. And I have a, sa a video about satellite data mapping and a resource if you want really good elevation data. But I don't want that for the purpose of the study. I just want to, uh, I, I just want to map like the free data. I don't really care so much about the data that, you know, that's available for money. Um, so you come in here into Global Mapper. The first thing you have to do is configure your study area. And let me show you how to do that. I can't, I always forget. But somewhere in here, yeah, coordinate converter. No, it's not coordinate. Configure right here. You have a configure tab. And you can do click on that and then go to projection. And then in this case, I just used my EPSG code and I set my datum to um, this SAD69 Brazil polyconic elevation datum. And if you go back to QGIS, it's a little bit easier to find that because down in QGIS, you've got this dude right here. And I don't know if this is the right data set or not. I can't remember why I chose this. I think I just got it off a report somewhere. Um, and it seemed like a good one. It didn't have any uh, deprecation notices or anything like that. So I went ahead and just put it on here. It's a UTM based data set for, for Brazil. Okay. Set your map up in, uh, in Global Mapper and then save it. And then you can add that KML and you can add that KMZ the same way we add those to every other file. We just drag and drop it straight onto the map. And then when you have that, you can, um, you can uh, let's see, give me a file and download, download online data. And I did, I chose the Aster because it's pretty good data and it gets you a little bit better data, I think, than the SRTM. So that's why I chose it. Connect to it and then you need to download it. Uh, so tools, I think this one is file and then export. And then this one, we want to export elevation in a grid format. So um, I chose the GeoTIFF because that's kind of what QGIS likes and click OK. And then I didn't really do anything here uh, fancy. I just left it default, 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 and then click OK. And then it exports your data. I'm not going to do it right now because I can't remember how long it takes. Um, then over here, after you get that data exported, here you can see I can drag that KMZ straight onto my map, just like I did on all the others. I can drag that KML on there. And I don't know if you can notice this or not, but that comes on exactly at the same place where I put my inflow hydrograph. And, uh, and then this is the elevation data that I got from that study area, okay? And that's simple. So, But if you need better elevation data, that's when you go. I have those resources on my website. And you, every dam has to, main, every tailing dam has to analyze and re do reviews of the elevation data of the tailings material, looking for deformation, looking for the tailings height increases so that they can measure those over time and make sure that the dam is safe. Obviously in this case, that didn't help. Um, but so there is better elevation data out there. Okay. And that is all of the, oh wait, sorry, one more thing. Then once I have my kind of study area, elevation, end value, I just popped the end value straight off of, you know, high vegetation, low vegetation, put some simple end values in there. They really don't matter. They're not sensitive in this study. The end values are not sensitive. Um, now, once you get all that, you're ready to assemble the data for the dam and for the tailings dam tool. So the tailings dam tool is in is right here. And if you don't have the tailings dam tool, I give it to you with the module seven. I give you the tailings dam tool and it comes with the sample data and it 
the tailings dam executable. So you need to get that from module seven if you don't have it, or just ask me for it, I'll get it for you. And um, then the reports that go along with the data from Wikipedia and using Google, I found the two important reports for this dam. That is the expert panel technical report. This is the post failure report. And you can download the whole thing in English and I highly recommend that you get it because it has awesome information to help you analyze and study these kind of dams. Second is the pre-failure report, which was published in 2018, an addendum in 2018, originally 2017, a addendum in 2018. And this one has excellent graphics and excellent information about the dam. So I would say get you down in here. You can see like how the dam was created and you can see like how long it took to us to build the dam. You know, it's constructed in layers. So you're not dealing with one single dam, you're dealing with like 10 different dams and they're, you know, all built by different companies. So that kind of an issue when you're trying to, you know, uh, analyze and get some information for this study. Uh, so I'm sorry, I was looking for the actual like setup of the dam, not this. Yeah, here we go. So you can see, you know, information about the dam. And then there's some cross sections of the dam um, geometry in here somewhere. It's probably easier just to go to my website because I have it all here. So let's go dam geometry view. So you can see, you know, each of these dams are built separately and filled up over time. And it's got, so when you get a geotechnical data for the dam, you know, they kind of all change. <laughs> and so you kind of have to, uh, you know, maybe focus on um, a point where there is, maybe it's not as safe or something like that. Uh, so you can get, you know, which one of these would be the best to put into the tailings dam tool for the review of the dam. And you can see here that you have the unit weight material and the cohesion and the uh, area or the angle of uh, whatever it is, angle of, I can't remember what it's called. And that is the data that's required by the tailings dam tool. So this shows you how to fill it all out. And the next video will be a more detailed review of filling out these parameters and analyzing the dam video and the dam um, papers to show you how I chose the specific values that I chose. And you might not agree with the values that I chose, so please, if you don't agree, let me know why so we, I can, you know, cor correct this method and, and make it better for future users. Okay, so thank you. I'm going to stop the recording for this one, and the next video will be adding information about the tailings dam tool and completing the model and running the model.